Streaming and relying solely on your streaming service to maintain a copy of your stream VOD is pretty silly. Not only do services like Twitch frequently delete those VODs after a short period of time, but then you have to re-download it to make any edits, and it's easy for mess-ups or quality loss to happen along the way. It's, it's not great. I already showed you how to seamlessly record an exact copy of your stream while streaming in episode 3 of this course, but what if you want a really awesome quality recording alongside a stream? That gets a tad more complicated, and there are considerations involved. Let's cover that in this episode. Are you ready to take ultimate control over your live stream but you're not sure how? The Elgato Stream Deck is the key to unlocking your full potential. With your choice of 6, 15, or 32 keys, all with customizable screens behind them, and unlimited possibilities to nest, make folders, and pages to control your live stream with scene switching, muting your microphone, activating your Elgato key lights, and setting up multi-actions to do everything at once. Start your stream, turn on your lights, tweet your stream, you can do anything. You'd be a fool not to have this in your setup. You don't want to be a fool, do you? Check it out via the link below and tell them the stream professor sent you. I'm Vox, and welcome back to my XSplit Masterclass, sponsored by XSplit. In previous episodes, we introduced you to Gamecaster and got you set up with your audio and video devices and streaming and recording settings and all of that goodness. Remember that every episode of this course will be in the playlist link in the description below. Check that if you have any questions or are confused about something because I've probably already covered it. That's why I kind of produce these all at once so that you have all of your answers up front and don't have to wait on the next episode to, answer, to, to be answered because they're already there. When I covered streaming and recording settings for Gamecaster, I noted that there's a record locally toggle in the streaming settings, but there's also a dedicated recording settings section. The toggle is good for just saving a copy of your VOD, but if you want to record higher quality than you streamed, you have to manage it from the recording settings dedicated section. This means you also have to hit start recording after you hit start streaming to save this one. However, the other one saved automatically. Also, if you watched the previous episode on hotkeys, then you know you can set up a hotkey to pause recording. Useful during a BRB bio break of a live stream or something like that to ke help keep your recorded copy a little bit more concise. Now you can leave recording on automatic or customize it to your liking and be fine, but unfortunately it's not entirely that simple. Remember how I described the balance of CPU power between your game and background processes and encoding? Should you use X264? Well, recording while streaming requires adding even more load to that balance. For recording, I highly, highly, highly recommend going with your graphics card's encoder instead of X264. Not only is performance not a concern here, since the GPU encoder will mostly perform flawlessly depending on which mode you have it on, plus you get up to two encode sessions on NVIDIA, and no limit on AMD anyway, but the quality is also fine. You'll be able to achieve a higher quality encoding on GPU than CPU this way anyway, due to performance. Now, that may sound contradictory to what I said before, where I said, at least on AMD's side, that CPU encoding would be of higher quality. But that only applies at very low bit rates, where you're trying to squeeze out the best possible quality for a low bit rate live stream up to Twitch or something. For a high bit rate local recording, however, those quality differences completely normalize out, and GPU encoding comes out on top due to the performance. There's virtually no reason to use CPU encoding to record while streaming at all, whatsoever, in any streaming program. Use that GPU encoder, that's what it's there for. If you're looking for a balance, a typical workflow is to stream on the CPU and record on the GPU. But depending on your hardware, using GPU for both may be a better option. Remember, a big rule of stream and recording settings is to test, test, and test again. So I would recommend starting at ultra quality, if that's you know what you're aiming for, and then working your way down should performance be a problem or file sizes are too big. You will get the best results out of matching the same frame rate and resolution between streaming and recording settings. That way Gamecaster isn't stuck deciding how to best optimize for your individual sources, be it you know for the 1080p recording or the 720p stream. But you can record at a higher resolution than you're streaming, which can be beneficial for editing and for YouTube later on, and things like that. Streaming while recording can be a great way to get supplemental content to help promote yourself on social media or build a YouTube channel. Though don't just, you know, upload, re-upload your whole stream VODs to your main YouTube channel. That's not really, no, no one's really going to watch those. Uh, it, it, those perform really, really poorly, but you can do that. But when it comes to performance, hopefully now you understand the considerations to make that happen. XSplit also provides a tool that makes clipping out and sharing portions of your VODs way easier. I cover that later in the course. It's in the playlist. Check the link. 
Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe for more tech education. Be sure to check the playlist link that I just mentioned in the description for more of the XSplit Masterclass. Don't forget my affiliate link if you haven't downloaded it already. I'm Epos Vox, and I'll see you next time.